Good afternoon. I'm Sandra Flo. I'm a partner uh, at Cleary Gottlieb, uh, as well as the chair of Cleary's D Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. And importantly for today, I'm the co-chair of Direct Women's Honoree Committee. Cleary Gottlieb is very proud to have been a platinum sponsor of Direct Women since the very beginning. And for myself, I'm honored to be able to introduce one of the amazing Sandra Day O'Connor Board Excellence Award recipients today. Most of us wear a lot of different hats, but Pamela Lynn Carter more than most. She has been a social worker, a corporate executive, an attorney, an elected official, and a director of both for-profit and non-profit boards. She received a master's degree in social work from the University of Michigan, a law degree from the Indiana University McKinney, McKinney School of Law, um, she completed a Harvard Kennedy School of Government and P Public Administration program for senior executives, and she also holds four honorary doctorate degrees. With all those letters, I, think, I didn't count them up, but I think that may be the, more than the number of letters actually in your name. <laughs> As a lawyer, she's been a litigator, a securities law chief prosecutor, an associate at a large firm, a partner, a Vice President General Counsel and Corporate Secretary of a Fortune 200 company, and the Attorney General of the State of Indiana. And let me not forget, of course, she is a wife, a mother of two married children, and a grandmother of three. And a large contingent of her family is present here today. We're delighted to see you here. <clears throat> So her career has been varied, but joined together by a common thread, service to others in the pursuit of excellence. Uh, that is something that first came out of her family. Uh, listening to the stories of her parents and grandparents, Pam learned about the often painful history of her family and of African Americans in the United States. She learned most about their resilience and their success over ins almost insurmountable odds and the necessity to give back as one progresses. As a teen, she marched with Dr. Martin Luther King for civil rights and justice. And Dr. King and Justice Thurgood Marshall inspired her to public service and the law, as did her paternal grandfather. And she has sought, sought throughout her career to advance people's rights in ways that strengthened the community overall. There are too many of those to talk about all of them, but I'll just mention a few. Um, Pam was elected Attorney General of the state of Indiana in 1992 the first woman and the first African-American in Indiana to be elected to that office, as well as the first African-American woman in the United States to hold that position. One of her first acts upon winning uh, the office was to increase the number of women and people of color as leaders and as lawyers and staff to the office. During her four years in office, she worked hard to represent the citizens, winning more cases in the, United, in the US Supreme Court than any other attorney general in the nation. Her office also won five times, not just once, five, right? The coveted uh, best US Supreme Court's briefs awards, so much so that they now have a rule called the Indiana Rule, which prohibits any one office from winning all of the best briefs awards going forward. <laughs> she personally argued and won a federal appeals court case that protected Indiana's rape shield law. On a different tack, she uh, has served as the Vice President, General Counsel, and Corporate Secretary of Cummings, Cummins Inc., a designer and manufacturer of diesel and alternative fuel engines. Uh, not only serving on the legal side, however, she's also worked on the business side there and moved with her family to Brussels for the first of those positions um, and eventually became the first woman to run one of the four business units at Cummins. And then let me just, of course, mention what we're particularly honoring tonight, uh, or today. Uh, she serves on four public boards, and, and it's a real testament. I believe all four of them have donated at the platinum level, uh, and all four of them are present here today, and so we thank you for that. So they are CSX, a freight and intermodal tr rail transportation company where she serves as chair of the finance committee. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, an IT and technology company where she serves as chair of the HR and compensation committee. Enbridge Inc., the largest oil and gas pipeline company in North America, where before the merger last year with Spectre Energy, she served as uh, Spectre's chair of the corporate governance committee. And Broadridge Financial Solutions, a financial technology and communications servicing company. 
So with all of that accomplishment, let's, let's hear about more, more from her today. Really a del delight for me to be welcoming and honoring uh, Pamela Lynn Carter. Please, please join me in congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for that nice introduction. And thank each and every one of you for coming today. I'm really delighted to see how Direct Women has grown. I was asking Bobby, as I thank the Direct Women for my award, how to pronounce her last name properly. And she said it's Liedenberg, and it means Love Mountain. <laughs> and she has loved this mountain as we are climbing from day one. And to see where you've come from when in terms of just concept to this reality is something that we all are so grateful for. So thank you, and direct, thank you, Direct Women, for this award. Sandra Day O'Connor, as you know, was the first woman to be Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. And when she left law school, which was Stanford Law School, she graduated third in her class. She ran their law review, was well regarded, and, and she also was, had her economics degree from Stanford, law, uh, from Stanford as uh, getting her BA. And the reason that I wanted to talk to her about her first is because she made a way with no way. When she came out of that law school, not one law firm wanted to hire her. Not one law firm was willing to take a risk with her. And that gives you an idea of how women were excluded. It had nothing to do with intellectual capability. It had nothing to do with our passion. It had nothing to do with our willingness to work or sacrifice. We were just excluded. Sandra Day O'Connor made a way where there was no way, and she went into the public sector, first in county attorney's office, and then in the attorney's in attorney general's office. She then went and became an elected official in the Senate, was the majority leader in the Senate, then went to the courts, and eventually wound it up at the United States Supreme Court. And the reason that I take time out for us to remember all of that it says she actually worked for all three branches of government. She graduated third in her class. She made it to the United States Supreme Court. And that's the great story. The back story is one where this award needs to renew our energies to make sure that we're moving forward against all of the competing interests against that, the traditions, the assumptions, and often the financial incentives that prevent us from moving faster along the way. So I want to thank Sandra Day O'Connor because she renews my interest. And I want to talk about my family for a moment because they have also made their way from no way. My father is here, 96 years old, who flew here. <laughs> World War II veteran, educated man, entrepreneur, raised three family, an inspiration, a poet, made his way when there was no way. My mother, 91 years old, a rock, an inspiration, a teacher, and she gave birth to th my three girls, my sister, Karen Ray, my sister, Shelly Harris, made their way with no way. The love of my life, Michael Carter, whom I met in college, who really made his way with no way, fought all the way through to college, fought all the way through college, got his MBA, fights today with his business, making his way with no way, Michael Carter, the love of my life. And the joys of our lives are two children, Michael Anthony Carter Jr. and Marcia, making their way through no way. 
And finally, I want to talk about two of our other family members, all of whom have literally flown from all over the country to be here to celebrate with direct women. And that are the Sheets, Simone Sheets and Jelana Sheets, one from Nashville, Brentwood, Tennessee, the other from New Orleans, who braved their way because we had a hard time getting here uh, last night. LaGuardia did not want us to come, I can tell you that. We got on the plane, off the plane, on the plane. But we made our way with a way. Sandra Day O'Connor and many of the people in this room and, I wanna, and our awardees are pioneers. And this is the moment for pioneers. And to be a pioneer means that we're going to address the stubborn resistance that continues to meet us every single day. The microaggressions, the lack of reassurance, the kinds of systems that keep holding in place because those are the traditions and the assumptions. And so not only as we're bringing human beings, women, people of color into our boardrooms, into our C-suites, but we have to also be aware of all those competing interests that keep pushing us back as we move forward to make certain that we're trying to change the systems so that they're much more welcoming and that there are ways that we don't have to always be pioneers. In 1992, when I was elected Attorney General, they called that the year of the woman, if you recall. And we were full of hope and enthusiasm. We had more women in Congress. We had more women in the Senate. We had more attorneys generals than we ever had, including Heid Heidi Heidkamp and Jeff Sessions. They were both in my class at the same time, so you know the span. But during that time, we actually worked together. <laughs> and because we actually got to know each other, that was the nonpartisan era, a way begone era that we might want to consider bringing back so that we can come together on common ground and make sure that as we are not only identifying the next group of people that they need not be pioneers, that they not be alone, that they not be just one or two or three or four. And I have to tell you that the boards that I am on who have been wonderful in not only supporting diversity, but are really aggressive in moving forward. We have boards that I serve on that made the decision that they were gonna have a diverse board, and then they went about and made it happen. We have people on our boards today, members that are chair of our boards are here, we have CEOs that are here, we have my colleagues on the board that are here, and we have members of the executive team that are here. And I want each and every one of you to know how deeply grateful I am for all of the time and energy and support that you've given me, but also the contributions you've given to the customers, the employees, our shareholders, and our communities that we live and work. And as we leave today, I hope that we can be recharged and renewed in a way to remember that those pioneers are pioneers for a reason. There's a reason why this award is called the Sandra Day O'Connor Award. There's a reason why we continue to have to remind people of the work that's been done by the awardees. There's a reason why we have to spend time with the Board Institute. It's because we're there, we're not there. These women have to continue to make a way where there is no way. These men have continued to man up in ways that have helped us to woman up on these corporate boards, in the streets, in our schools, and with our families. So again, I wanna thank each and every one of you for participating in some way, shape, or form in supporting direct women and in supporting me in this award. Thank you very, very much.